Hey, beautiful. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Depending on the time zone that you're watching us from, uh, this is uh, yours truly, uh, Mr. Panuka from Panuka Farm, uh, right here in Zambia, uh, just in the outskirts of uh, you know the capital, uh, you know Lusaka. And uh, obviously, you're actually used to seeing Mr. Panuka coming, you know, live from uh, Panuka Farm in the greenhouses, open fields, and the like. Um, but I think we need to make sure that uh, you know we extend the conversation of farming uh, beyond just Panuka Farm. And uh, today, um, we want to look at the issues of labor. Um, I think a number of uh, you know farmers in Zambia have actually complained that um, the quality of the labor that we're actually bringing, you know, on the farms. You know has issues um, and some of the assertions you know relate to the fact that sometimes um, the skills are a bit too um, theoretical you know uh, they lack the grounded um, you know practical aspect of uh, you know farming um, so what we want to do today is to try and see if we could actually hear it from the host's mouth uh, in terms of how they train uh, you know some of these skills that end up on our farms and uh, so Mr. Panuka is right now, you know, on the way to Chipembe Agricultural College, uh, just uh, in the outskirts of, uh, you know, Chisamba. And uh, what we actually want to do is uh, to have a conversation uh, with the, you know, principal of uh, Chipembe. Um, given that, obviously, you probably may have heard that uh, Chipembe is one of those, uh, you know, colleges um, that actually do produce quite some very practical, uh, you know, graduates. Uh, and obviously, after we you know, hear from uh, the principal who then touch base with the, you know, students themselves to try and just uh, understand the depth, you know, of their understanding uh, of the various, you know, facets of, uh, you know, agriculture. So, tag along as uh, we chat with the principal and also interact with the uh, students. My name is um, Patience Maluza, the principal for Chipembe College of Agriculture. Uh, I guess this institution is not new. Chipembe, formerly known as the Chipembe Farm College, or is a faith-based institution owned by the United Church of Zambia, and it was established way back around 1930s by missionaries. So we've been on the market for a long time, and we're doing quite well, especially in providing agricultural skills to the youths out there, even to the general public, the retirees, cooperative groups. So we are an agricultural institution uh, affiliated with the Teveta, a government examining body, Steveta, and we are offering agricultural skills to mostly the youths, uh, the retirees, the school dropouts, the young entrepreneurs. So here at Chipembe College of Agriculture, we provide skills training. 90% of our syllabus is very practical in the field. We do most of our work in the field and not in class. Today, we're not coming live from Panuka Farm, but we are at Chipembe you know, College of Agriculture uh, talking to these lovely you know, colleagues here. And, uh, you know, uh, as we journey through uh, here at uh, Chipembe College, uh, you actually get to appreciate, you know, the various, you know, ventures that uh, these students are, are learning here. Um, remember, as, uh, you know, farmers, we actually want to get very practical, you know, um, experts uh, on the farm. And so today you actually be able to see uh, that uh, expertise being uh, exhibited by these, uh, you know, lovely colleagues. So the poetry based uh, or specific for egg production. Yes, as you can see, these are layers. Uh, the breed that we have here is Loman, which is specific for egg production. It's very good in terms of uh, laying the eggs. Also, same applies the managerial practices. They don't differ uh, that much with uh, the broilers. They also do the same. The issue of uh, uh, disinfecting, uh, feeding, and the rest. Uh, the only difference which might be there is uh, when they reach uh, this stage, which is uh, uh, 16 to 18 months, which is close to four and a half months, the laying stage. The yeah. only is that they don't give them the, the finisher or to give them the, the lay mash so that uh, they can be producing eggs so frequently. Immediately after laying another egg, uh, the other one, uh, the, uh, the other formation of the other egg starts to make it. So, uh, the way we keep uh, these chickens, we stay with them for a quite period of time. And uh, how we determine to say that uh, now it is, they are about to stop laying, we usually check them under here, underneath of the some of the abdomen. You, you have to press in uh, these three fingers in here. If you, if you see that the fingers are still going in, 
then you need to uh, you know that uh, the bed is still productive it is still producing eggs for you but if you see uh, you start pressing uh, your fingers then you see that uh, it's uh, you not a uh, uh, you do not have uh, access uh, for it to be put in then you have to know that uh, the the bed uh, the laying stage it's uh, going to an end so that, 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 but the, the advantage of this thing, even if the rain stage has gone to an end, you shall still sell uh, the, the bed as in a meat sauce. This is, we know that we are wild animals, we just domesticated them. We have to keep them entertained. They climb there, they play with each other. So the reason for this is to keep these, uh, these chickens active and entertained. What, what breeds do we have here? Uh, and oh. then, uh, I've never heard of a breed called uh, Lozi. Lozi. Mm. Barose. Oh, Barose. Yeah. Ah, okay, interesting. Barose. Barose. I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, when the topology of the crow <coughs> is flat, or is yeah, flat, uh, water will be logging, and the animals will won't find where to spend the night. But in this setup, we made it this side higher than that that side because in the rain season when it rains, the water will log that side. Here there will be a dry land where the kettle. So, so this side is lower. Yes. But I can see a depression there. Yeah, a depression because we were digging manure for our gardens. The importance but... of venturing into kettle production, uh, it's a source of income, mm -hmm. firstly, and it improves your uh the, the surroundings mm -hmm. in terms of grass goes grazing mm -hmm. so it it eats from the uh -huh. from the fields okay. then an animal draft power. Uh, animal draft power use the oxen for animal draft power okay. yes and do you do that here yes, yes we do we do it okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have oxen there oh uh, okay yeah. it's also a source of employment like we have a a man mr collins who Okay. He's employed. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. He's well in the animals. Ah, between this one and the chicken manure, which one would you recommend for chicken gardening? Chicken chicken. Why? Because it has high content of nitrogen. Nitrogen. Yes. Okay. When we're getting this, we don't usually get the one on top. We, we get, we dig. Oh, you have to dig. Yep, we dig. Because we this dig. one is not decomposed. Ah, so okay. You're not, so we, you're not we clear the place up. Clear. Yeah. That's just fiber. Exactly. Okay. The, the one on top? The, yeah. Yes. The manure, the down. nutrients. Yes. It's down. down. You'll find that if you use it in the field, the high content of uh, wheat. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. It's only animal that can bark every time. Mata. My name is Mata Banda, and uh, we are here at the Twitter reception. We are here to talk about the managerial practices that we do at the piggery section. And the first thing that we do every morning when we come here, we clean the tent, first of all. Uh, we change the water that we put every morning in the, in the, in the tent. And when we are done doing that, at eight hours, uh, the pigs are fed because they are fed twice in a day. They are fed at eight hours and at 16 hours. Then there are some of the managerial practices that we do, which are uh, when the pigs are born, we do uh, tear docking, uh, we also do teeth stripping, castration, and we also give them iron injection. There are some things that uh, we, uh, we need to consider when constructing, when constructing a bigger like pen, because there are about four types of uh, pens. There is a, 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 a sow pen, a boar pen, a pen for, for a litre. So how old are these? They are about uh, it should be three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah. Oh. Just in there. It look very big. Yeah. So if you look at uh, this one is not castrated. No, it's not. Okay. It has, it has been kept for for breeding. Ah, for breeding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at it, there are some factors that you consider when selecting. An animal for breeding. Okay. It's quite big. Okay. Very good body confirmation. Very, body very good, good body confirmation, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're also going, going to demonstrate on how we give them feed. Okay. Mm. So we have a little piece here. 
Oh yeah. Lenders. Ah, okay. The other side? Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, there are ways of frustrating. There's a, there a surgical one uh, that is a, a good dozer. So this one, we use surgical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There is a main surgical. Uh, and they are castrated when they are old. Uh, the uh, castration is done uh, within two weeks. Uh, 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 so explain. Mm -hmm. what? So this one is the, it's already to dot. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All these activities are performed oh. by students. Oh, okay. They are dealing with the castration, castration. the damage. Okay. Some are castrated. Have you castrated the uh, one before? Yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so who's in charge of the goats? Oh, they're already stationed there. Good. But now we have an empty. They've yes, gone. Yeah, they went gone oh, okay. Yes. Uh, so welcome to our goat crow. Uh, this is where we keep our goats and perform some of the manage ma managerial practices. Uh, the reason for such a layout, why the the cows is on top, because these. These animals are very smart. They hate mud. They are easily, they, because they are hooved animals, they can be attacked by foot and mouth diseases such as foot and mouth and other common, common diseases. Yes. So the type of, the system of such keeping is called semi-intensive uh, keeping. The reason for semi-intensive is because we provide some of the supplement feed. We, sub we supplement and feed the and we let them go out grazing. Okay. Then he will talk about some of the managerial practices here. Uh, a, a tagging for identification, of course, you need to put a tag. Then the other one is deworming. Deworming is done every after three, mm -hmm. three, three weeks, three, three, months. Months. three months. We deworm them because these animals are very sensitive. Yeah, so we deworm them, making sure that they are okay. Because others die of the worms. We had one that just died after doing the most more damage was found it had worms. So we usually recommend to deworm them after three months. Yeah, the other managerial practice that we do here is of course like we said feed since it's semi intensive we, we supplement feed for them and let them move on the free range. That's what we do to our boats. Okay. We have about there there are seventy one. Seventy six. Ninety six. Oh, they brought others. Eh? Now. There are 96 goats that we have here. Okay. And, and when selecting a buck, the one that you use for breeding, we recommend you're not supposed to get it when it's big. Don't buy a, a, a big goat for breeding. Okay. Get it when it's still small, so that you can see its performance, its fertility, and how prolific it is. Welcome to the fish pond. My name is Chama Mary, with my colleague Gondwani Mwale. I am a first year student pursuing a trade case certificate in general agriculture. I'm going to briefly explain to you about fish farming. I'll first define what aquaculture is. Aquaculture simply means farming the water. Before you put up a pond, you first have to select a site where you put up your fish pond. Our fish pond is about 10 by 12 square meter, which is 120. And we have a stocking rate of about 120 fingerlings per square meter. In this fish pond, we have 1,200 fingerlings in it. And the type of fish that we have in here is called tilapia oclamis nailoticus, which simply means it is white on the whole body. Uh, we give 
fry mash to the fingering from the one up to when they are about 15 grams. And then we proceed to crumble when the fish is from 15 grams and wait every after two weeks. We give crumble when the fish is more than 15 grams to about 80 grams. Then we switch to pre-starter when the fish is about 100 grams to 120 grams. Then we end with the, the starter which is about 120 to 300 grams. Capture fish, this is the type of fish that is mainly found in uh, natural ponds such as drakes, rivers and dams. While culture fish is found in man-made drakes, like, I mean, man-made pools, ponds, like these ones. And we have two types of fish ponds here at Kipendi because the type of soil here cannot keep water for a longer period of time. So we have a lined pond, which is this one that has a plastic inside. Mm -hmm. And we also have the, the concrete pond. The pegging of the fish pond. Usually, it depends on how many meters that you want, how big you want your fish pond to be. It's so like from here, it's always a meter, one meter from here. In digging, we don't start from here, we start from here. So this one, we make it a slant, it becomes slant. We make that shape from that side. Yes, so we cut this one, we start from here. So usually it's uh, 1.5, 1, 1 meter when digging. We cut it into three pieces. This one, this one and that one. Why, why in three pieces? What's the rationale? The essence is to, to come up with uh, uh, the shape of a wheelbarrow. Okay. Yeah. So this side, Okay. Yes. Type of the soil that we have here cannot hold water for a longer period of time. So we have a lined pond which has a plastic inside. How did you did, I mean did you say that the the soil can't hold water? Yes, we did test the water, the soil. How? We had dug a pit, then we had poured water for mm -hmm. about one hour. The water couldn't be kept for a longer period of time. Okay. It's sucking water. It sucks water. Okay. The soil sucks water. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the, the basic test that you do on the soil, yes. right? Okay. <laughs> not, the not, those are the only ones. It's the only one. No, no. Oh, really? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, another one is okay. uh, when you pour the when you pour water, you can get the sand. You hold it in your in your in your arms like this. Uh -huh. Then you throw it in the air. When you drop when it drops down and it's not holding, uh -huh. then it disintegrates. Means, okay. Yes, then it means the soil can't hold the water. Ah, okay. Yes. Good. That's a good point. So how, how how many fish do you have and what, what type of fish do you have in here? Tilapia or Krami snake, Nilochicas. Oh, okay. Yes. How old? They are about different sizes. Oh, okay. Big ones. Oh, interesting. So when you saw when someone's bait in for competition, we have to come on. Throw them in here, yeah. <laughs> and they are able to, they are able to swim. Yeah. So everyone of you has come in here. Ah, interesting. <laughs> if you are looking for farm workers, farm supervisors, farm managers, please get our graduates. Our graduates are very well known out there in the field, especially by commercial farmers who employ them, even non-governmental organizations and agribusiness companies. Know that our students are very skilled. They have the skill, the quality skill that you need to run your farm effectively. So please come through to Chipembe College of Agriculture and employ one of our graduates who will not disappoint you.